So I've got Tamash here. Tamash is an awesome scoper and operations manager of Green Aqua. Uh, yeah, let's call it that. Basically, uh, I make uh, the decisions on a daily basis uh, throughout the store and uh, our wholesale uh, projects and uh, everything with uh, building customer projects and such. You're a busy man, right? Uh, yeah, I am, sadly. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for taking the time out to, uh, to be interviewed. Well, thank you for and, including me. Yeah, and uh, this is the tank here. Yep. And exactly. uh, let's turn the camera around and talk about it in more detail. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so Tamash, can you tell me uh, about the tank in general, dimensions and a little bit of the technical detail about the tank? Yep, it's a 90 by 90 by 45 tank, so basically two 90 P's uh, glued together. So for our American friends, that's three feet by three feet by 18 inches tall. Yep, should be right, I believe you. <laughs> um, and this uh, was supposed to be a 360 walk around tank, so this, that was the idea that we have a tank that you can see from all sides. If you have lots of space, for example, uh, in a lobby of a building or such, then uh, you can have this outstanding piece in the center of it. And uh, it turned out, uh, well, we are satisfied with it, let's say. And uh, our customers uh, also like the idea of uh, being able to walk around the tank and having uh, an infinite aquascape, basically. Yeah. And uh, can you tell us just uh, about the, maybe the lighting? So we have T5 fluorescent tubes. Yep, these are uh, ATI uh, 4 by 39 watt T5 lights, two of them actually. Um, we've decided to use these uh, to showcase the difference between LEDs. Most of our tanks are running on uh, ADA solar RGBs, so this is a different approach. Um, you can see the color difference and uh, you can see that with T5 basically you can achieve uh, the same results. But of course uh, we miss the shading effect. Yeah, there's no ripple effect, right? yep. no glitter lines. That's uh, basically the only downside of T5 I can think of. I think that, that for some people they prefer that flat uniform lighting. Uh, some people actually don't like the glitter lines. Yes, so I think exactly, it's a of taste, exactly. Right? It's, uh, it's up and, to uh, taste. Is the, is the pink tube there, is that for growth or color rendition or both? Um, usually we, are, we use at least one uh, purple uh, tube in between the three normals uh, just to pop the colors uh, if we would have any red plants uh, it would pop them but uh, it's the same case with the fish themselves so the amande fish with the orange color it just pops out a bit uh, with the purple tube yeah let's go and have a look at those beautiful so these yeah. are Hypheso Brycon Amandi. we call them Ember Tetras in the UK they're very popular in aquascaping, very small, they stay small, they show very well in this tank, uh, just a perfect addition. So let's talk about the plants. I've, uh, this is a beautiful carpeting plant. I think this is Elatine Hydropropa? Exactly, it is. Uh, and this is a plant that most people are uh, afraid of for some reason. Uh, not many people are using it in aquascapes. Uh, but it's actually, it's a pretty easy plant compared to uh, any other carpet plants it doesn't require lots of co2 it doesn't require lots of light the only thing you have to be uh, very careful with is temperature so ah, basically this plant is uh, in the best way around 20 22 degrees celsius um, if it goes over 24 degrees it just melts out in a few days so oh, that's interesting. So did you have problems with the heat wave? We have uh, hot summers in Hungary, right? Uh, luckily, we had no problem this year. Actually, I've made uh, a similar Latin carpet uh, a year ago in our old shop and someone turned the AC off for two days oh, no. and that was it. Oh, wow. So it's very sen I've, that's something, I've learned something today. That's amazing. And then we have some Stauragini Reapens. This is a really easy plant, I find. Beautiful. Yep, it's easy plant and uh, good detail in and basically every an escape. And you've attached it to the rock as well, which is a really cool technique that I've done before. I've attached it to wood as well, so that's a top tip for you guys. You don't have to necessarily plant these plants into the soil, so perfect. And then we have some of the uh, Ricardia, uh, which is like this moss. Uh, it's not actually a moss, it's a liverwort. Um, but again, that's a really popular plant for aquascapers, right? This is yep, in the, the center of the screen right now. Also a nice detail because it brings you a different green uh, in any aquascape. It's Quite a bit a deeper and green, a bit, right? bit more um, contrast yeah. to the plants. And then we've got the classic kind of Elio Caris Mini, a really nice carpeting, easy carpeting plant. 
Do you find it needs quite a lot of light, Tomas, or what do, what do you uh, kind of suggest for growing this? It's a very popular plant, so... I would say it grows well uh, with a bit less light, uh, okay. but it grows this very dense uh, type only under high lighting. Yeah, okay. And so, moving up, we have some beautiful stem plants, I think at the top there, is that Henry Anthus glomeratus? Uh, no, it's actually Gratiola. Vis ah, Gratiola. I'll put, the, yeah. I'll put her name in the, in the description. Yeah, I don't know the second name. And actually some uh, Meriophyllum Guiana yeah. growing out of it. Uh, it would need a trim right now. Yeah. Are they all Tropica plants? Uh, yep, all Tropica inside. Uh, most of them want to grow? Or? Yes, uh, except for the Ricardia, everything else is want to one grow. To grow we just love the tissue plants, uh, especially with these kind of uh, Evagum escapes. It just grows to, uh, much better and you have the uh, you have a leveled out growth in between the plants. Yeah, I'm a massive fan of the one to grow. Um, I just I think they're the best quality tissue culture. I like the liquid media when it comes in, very easy to prepare. It's much easier than anything else. Yeah. You, you can clean it in a second and just use the plants. And a really cool thing, the Tropica actually produce their own plants in-house in, in, in Denmark and they have an, a, a huge kind of production facility, their own laboratory, which is amazing. Um, okay, that, I think that's it for the plants. Uh, the water quality, you use reverse osmosis water? Yep, we use it in all our tanks. Uh, we just use uh, the green aqua GH plus to give back that uh, little GH that we need. Uh, we usually go for about uh, 120 ppm in TDS. Uh, and that's it, that's perfect for the fish, perfect for the shrimps and perfect for the plants. Yeah. And do you uh, add your own GH booster? You have your own, you have your own branded GH booster? Yep, we have the Green Aqua GH Plus. It's, uh, it's a powder-based uh, GH razor or GH booster, uh, and it works well. So all the tanks reverse osmosis? Yes, all of them actually. We, now we have uh, a 500 liter uh, bucket let's call it that. You're going to see? Uh, which, yeah, yeah, sure. And actually, uh, it's on the way. We, we are getting a thousand liter one in a few oh, days. This is actually the behind the scenes room. We have the 500 liters here. Uh, it's almost full. We have an automatic system and those two are making our water wow. right there. And do, they, do you need to change the cartridges quite frequently, I guess? Yeah, we replace, the, we replace them every two months or so just to make sure that we don't kill the membranes uh, with this high usage. Yeah. And so what's the tap water like uh, from, from the mains? Is it really hard and not very nice? Is that why you use reverse osmosis? Yeah, exactly. In Hungary, it's usually around 400 ppm, okay. which is quite high. Yeah. You get lots of, uh, you get lots of uh, white residue mm -hmm. on the water level. So. The because the open top tanks, right, you get the evaporation. Yeah, exactly. But now because you use the reverse osmosis, you don't get so much of the collection at the top. Yep, exactly right. That's perfect. And um, what about fertilization? What fertilizers do we use on this? Uh, we are using ADA on this one. Uh -huh. uh, actually, we are still using the old one because we have some left. So okay. this one gets uh, Bright K and uh, Step 2 Step right now. Okay. And nowadays we're going to switch to the new system from okay. ADA. Perfect. Uh, substrate? Substrate, this has uh, ADA Power Send M uh, on the bottom layer and then uh, ADA Amazonia on the top. Actually, it has uh, four bags of normal Amazonia and one bag of powder on top of it, just to make sure that the hill itself doesn't just fall over. Uh, filtration, you've got some very cl clever kind of glass outlets and inlets here. Yes, and most people think this has a sump filter because of the uh, glass coming from the cabinet itself, but actually we have a simple Eheim 2080 underneath, so nothing special there. We use lots of Seekem matrix and uh, Seekem purigen inside, and we just, uh, we just drilled the aquarium the bottom of the tank you can see it there in the back and uh, we have a little tap underneath all connections so we can just close it we get the glass out and so just it's clean so it. So it's easy to clean right? Yeah exactly. Oh, I did wonder how you clean them. So yeah it's always uh, a question. So two inlets and one outlet? Exactly yeah. with the Yeheim and the 28 so yeah, it comes yeah, like that. Really cool. And um, fish wise we've got Micro Resbora Kabotai which is the green neon resboras, uh, the Ember Tetras, Lots of Amano shrimps, probably what, 100 or so? Yes, and uh, actually this is my favorite uh, uh, 
pair of fish, the Amande and the Cuba type. I love them swimming together, they're schooling around the mountain. Uh, I've used them basically in all my Iwagumi escapes before because they just yeah, they work really, very well together. They're a really classic kind of great aquascaping fish, I think. Uh, and the Ember Tetras, they just work really well together. I think that colour combination is perfect. And the stone is um, uh, Siriu or Mini Landscape? Yeah, it's Siriu. And uh, actually, it was just a quick uh, hardscape build. I just collected all our Siriu's from the back uh -huh. uh, and just started putting them together and actually ended up using all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many kilograms? Uh, it's around 80 kilograms uh, okay. inside. Wow. And how about CO2 injection? CO2, we use uh, an Aquamedic external uh, reactor. Uh -huh. Uh, so we dissolve the CO2 inside the filtered water itself. It's the best way for anything about 160 liter. I would recommend using. CO2? Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's beside, well, behind the filter itself. Oh, I see. Back. Yeah. It's a bit dark inside. No problem. And so you don't actually see any of the CO2 bubbles in the water, right? So it will get you don't see the bubbles. You don't see a diffuser. So it's just less equipment and less yeah. distraction so in the tank itself. I don't know if you guys can see the bubbles there right now, they're just oxygen bubbles because the plants are photosynthesizing so well that we call that purling in the, in the hobby, for those of you guys that don't know. And just uh, one last kind of technical point, we're running the Eheim surface skimmer. It's kind of a shame that we have to use that, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Uh, actually, when we start a tank uh, in the first two or three months, it's almost always necessary to use a skim because there's just uh, too much surface come uh, from the plants getting used to their new environment. Uh, we're hoping that we can get it out in a few weeks. And uh, until then, we usually only use it at night, but someone forgot to get it out this morning. <laughs> uh, that's, that's funny. Um, and do you ever find the shrimps getting in the top of the surface skimmers? Sometimes we do. Uh, actually, we have two solutions for that. Uh, one of them is putting the skim on a timer and then it goes for half an hour and stops for and half an hour they, they, they can climb out yeah. yeah and the other thing is sometimes we use uh, the normal plant pots we just cut them and put them yeah. on the on the skim itself and that way they can't even get in so there you go guys top tip for you if you're finding that your livestock is getting sucked in by the skimmers which a lot of people do experience. yeah it's a usual problem so, and uh, we have a, a dedicated maintenance guy here don't we uh, gabor and so is this maintained once a week or Yep, all our tanks are maintained once a week uh, and the extreme of this tank is that it only needs trimming every, every month. So we only, I only trim the Graziola and the Myriophyllum on the top and nothing else needs to be touched, okay. only just water changes. Wow, 50% uh, water change? 50% every week. Wow, okay, that's perfect. Okay guys, thanks so much to Hamash for allowing me to interview you. I know you're a busy man, so thank you so much. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. I think this tank's absolutely beautiful, one of the, my favourite displays in the shop. Uh, keep an eye on my channel, there are at least two more videos coming out on this amazing shop. Green Aqua have a very special video out coming out soon as well about my visit here, so that's going to exactly. be exciting. Um, so that's it guys, uh, what do you... Oh, I do have a question, I always have a question. You should have. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what do you prefer, guys? Ember Tetris or the Green Neon Tetris? So, the High Beso Brycon Amandai or the Micro Rasbor Rakabutai? Let me know in the comments which is your favourite. And, yeah, just, wow, what a tank. Well done, mate. And it's just amazing. Thank so, you. So, um, thanks for watching, guys. You take care. Keep on, Keep on escaping. escaping. Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> Cheers. Cut those arms for the video. Who is this guy? Who is, who is this guy? You're filming me. That's embarrassing. <laughs>